In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. You all seem so much farther away with the bell tables here. So, so this past week was our last week of chapel for our preschoolers. And uh, I started to think about how we wrap up the year. We've gone through the, the whole uh, story of the Bible. Uh, and we had kind of the three uh, stories left to wrap up. The great commissioning, uh, the great commission uh, of Jesus to his followers. Uh, the ascension. Uh, which we have the window to certainly help us with. Uh, and then that Pentecost, the church's birthday, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, trying to figure out how do you wrap uh, those stories together for four and five year olds, three, four and five year olds, uh, as they head out for summer vacation. And so we, uh, we decided the first place to start was, uh, was God stuck in the chapel. We knew God was in the chapel. We light the candle. We knew God was there. Uh, but what about when we leave the chapel? And they were pretty clear that God left with them when they left the chapel, and that God was still in the chapel, but God was with them. And then I said, what about when you leave the school? And what kind of adventures are we going to go on? They, they were going to go to the beach and the lake. They were going to catch fireflies, go to the playground, uh, run in the woods. And well, was God with them then? And they said, absolutely. And so they understood that God was always going to be with them, even when they were outside of St. James. We talk about that twofold thing. That means wherever they are, they're never alone, that God is always with them. It also means that they always have the chance to show God to others because God is always with them. But it's, sometimes it's difficult to take these things near this end of the year and get them to a place where we can take them in our hearts. We're at that point where we've celebrated Easter and we're getting ready uh, for, for Ascension. We're getting ready uh, for the, the church's birthday, for the Pentecost experience. And we have this long and beautiful, beautiful discourse uh, uh, from John's Gospel. Uh, and there's so many jewels in it, but sometimes it's hard uh, to grab hold of it, hard to get it into our hearts. So I want you just to journey with me with a few phrases and a few images. I am sending you an advocate. I will give you an advocate. An advocate is actually a legal term, and it's hard to sort of get uh, that legal term into our hearts. Uh, but God is sending another advocate. That Jesus came so there would be no veil between God and God's people, so that uh, there would be nothing that separates us from God's love, so that we knew that God was with us, the incarnation, that God is with us in the flesh. And I am sending you another advocate. Sending you somebody to walk the journey of life with you. And I went for a run yesterday in between things, and uh, I noticed sidewalk chalk, and it, it sent me reeling back to uh, my first commitment to run uh, a half marathon. Uh, they called it a mini marathon, but I refused to call it a mini marathon because it's the most athletic thing I've ever done. Um, and 13 miles deserves something more than a mini uh, attached to it. But, uh, but there's this giant uh, marathon or half marathon uh, the week uh, or two before Derby, and it starts sort of all the Derby, Derby festivities. Uh, and so I signed up for it, and having not ever run any more than a 5K, uh, and I started to train. And I noticed one day as I'm running through the park in Louisville uh, that a group of people have done the most remarkable thing. They've taken sidewalk chalk, uh, and about every 50 feet, they've written something inspirational. You can do this. We're with you. Some Bible passages. You're almost there, just one more turn, good for you. I mean, just a wonderful array of messages uh, as you ran. And I, uh, I realized that they stayed for a long time. Either we didn't have any rain or they went and they retraced it uh, again and again. But for most of the time that I was training for this mini marathon, I would have these messages of encouragement, these people uh, who were, were running with me that I'd never met. An advocate, somebody who was running the race of life with me. And uh, I didn't keep me from tweaking my cap about a couple weeks before the race, and so I couldn't uh, train, but I got to the race day. And I remember uh, being all ready, hoping that my legs would, uh, uh, would work, uh, and I got into the line, and uh, since I hadn't been able to training, I thought, well, maybe at least I can do is make sure I'm super hydrated for the race. Uh, so I started that very, very early that morning, uh, so much so that when I got to the start line uh, and kind of found my place, I had to uh, uh, leave that because nature called. Uh, 
But I wasn't the only one who believed in hydration before uh, a, a good race. Uh, so the lines were quite long uh, uh, at the port of port -Lutz. So uh, uh, by the time I finally got back into line, I was about a half mile from the start line. Uh, but, but I knew they wouldn't start my time until that little thing on your, uh, on your race number, on your bib, uh, crosses the, the start line. Uh, but I realized for the first mile that you know, you're running about five uh, steps forward and then two to the side, and you, uh, you're, you're into such a big cluster that you spend a good bit of that first race just trying to, to get out of that. Uh, and all of a sudden, I realized in that process that my calves, uh, that my calf that I tweaked was, was, uh, was aggravating. Uh, and then uh, I think the world is divided between people who run exclusively with music and those who uh, are, are absolutely no music. And I am definitely in the uh, needing music to run uh, category. Uh, and um, with 12,000 of my closest friends also trying to get on Pandora, uh, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden uh, my music went out. And so my calf uh, uh, is aching. Uh, I'm about half mile into the race and I've got uh, 12 and a half miles to go. I have no music and it starts to rain. And I'm thinking at this point that maybe next year is a great year for me to do the <laughs> half marathon. Uh, but all of a sudden, I see this person uh, run by me, and he has uh, a white shirt with a red number 24. And that was uh, both my cousin's uh, 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 number and the color of his jersey uh, when he was paralyzed in his first uh, uh, college hockey game. Uh, and uh, which had happened 20 years earlier. And I thought to myself, if he can uh, go through 20 years of life uh, unable to move his hands or feet, I can continue this race. But it also opened my eyes to all of the other things that were there. Uh, it opened my eyes to seeing uh, the, the, the number of people who put inspirational things on the back of their shirt for the people running behind them. Uh, to everybody who's there on the sidelines, and whether it's an act of pride that you're not going to be the one walking uh, while people are outside on their front porches, uh, but the number of school bands and creative signs and people, perfect strangers, cheering you on. Uh, and I realized I had a million advocates, uh, a million of people running beside me or encouraging me during that journey, uh, the, the journey of life. Uh, and, and yes, it was only a 13-mile run, but uh, there are bigger races that are being run uh, there's uh, races uh, for those suffering from, uh, from life-altering conditions, uh, some that they won't recover from. There are people battling cancer. There are people battling uh, depression, uh, uh, loss of a loved one, uh, any of a countless things, and they're never alone. Sometimes we show them what the advocate is. Uh, I see incredible things take place, incredible advocates in the world, uh, people who make sure that... Uh, that their loved one will always have fresh flowers every <coughs> week of the year as long as she is alive. I see people who show up in uh, goofy costumes uh, at, 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 at the chemo center so that there's a, at least a laugh before they get hooked up to chemotherapy. Uh, I've seen people whose uh, uh, freezers have to be uh, uh, re who need to buy new deep freezers to fit all the food that people have made them. Uh, I see cards uh, sent to and fro. I see people praying. I see people on the sidelines wanting to jump in uh, and waiting for a way that they might be able to help. I see people driving halfway up and down the state to take uh, their loved ones uh, to treatments. Uh, I see people who are willing to stand shoulder to shoulder with us no matter where our race uh, is being run. Uh, and that's the image I want you to think of uh, when Jesus says, uh, I am sending you an advocate, that you are never alone, uh, that there is a, uh, a love uh, and a presence of God that is with you, that is speaking for you. I've seen doctors and nurses and lawyers uh, and bankers helping people during fragile points of their lives after they've lost a loved one, trying to figure out how to, how to uh, pay the bills and get affairs in order. Uh, how do I even address uh, this diagnosis and, and who do I talk to? I've seen people who've been through it uh, advocating for those to come through it. I've seen a child taking care of parents, and parents taking care of children. We represent all of the advocates um, that God promises to send into our lives and the fact that God is the ultimate advocate in our lives. I also encourage you to think of another line. I will not leave you orphaned. And I can't hear that line uh, without uh, the image uh, of the Lord's baptism that I tell every uh, family as they get ready to baptize. Uh, I think it's one of the most pivotal images uh, in our story uh, that Jesus, who had no sin, enters into this baptism to be washed from sin. Uh, 
because he is our advocate, he is our voice. He's taking on all of our brokenness, and he enters into the water. And when he comes out of the water, representing all that humanity ever has, is, or will be, God's voice comes out and says, this is my child. This is my son. This is my daughter. This is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. And that message is for every one of us. Every person, as we enter that sacrament of baptism, is claiming that truth, that that Father in heaven is all of ours and will never leave us orphaned. This is the image I want you to think of as well as you think of, uh, of that line. I, I have been thinking this time of year over the last several years as we've graduated now our third, fifth grade class. Uh, I'm always struck by the transformation that's taken place in these young people as they enter fifth grade, as they come through fifth grade. Uh, and it's the season where they're, they're presenting their fifth grade service projects to all of the younger students. Uh, they're taking lead roles in the school play. Uh, they are, um, they're just exercising leadership and composure and confidence uh, and, a, and a sense of knowledge of the gifts that God has put inside of them. Uh, and they're helping uh, younger students along the way. And they're nurtured by a community that's known them since they were about this tall uh, and, and by classmates that they've grown up together with. Uh, and my prayer for them is that no matter where they go, that they don't lose track of this moment, that they don't lose track of how confidently they know themselves, their gifts, and that they are loved. When Jesus is getting ready to depart from those that he loved to the end, he's telling them, you will never be alone. You will never be orphaned. You will never be absent my love. You will never be absent the Father. I will be with you always. So what you thought was impossible, that you now understand is possible within you, the powers uh, that, that you have been given to go out and be world changers, never forget that. Because I will never leave you orphan. So lock these images in. God is with us. God does send us out. God does promise us. I will send you an advocate. I will always be with you. You will never be orphan. Amen.